The Tinumbu administration gets kudos and encouragement for work done so far, urged to even be more proactive in addressing the myriad of challenges confronting the nation. African Development Bank and other partners promise to give Nigeria's new Elmsmen a helping hand in the key sectors of the economy. Party stores and industry players position to see who gets what, and the nation waits for the appointments into key cabinet positions as a new administration begins to take shape. Also on political update today, four months to the off-cycle governorship elections in Kogi, Bayasa and Imo states, drums of contestation and disagreements already being beaten loud in some locales. We have this and more in a moment. I hope you've enjoyed your salad break. I'm Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. President Bola Tinumbu returned to his political home turf for the first time since taking the reins of leadership in Africa's biggest democracy. At a reception in his honor in Lagos, he charged leaders of sub-national governments to be ready for a rewarding partnership that will strengthen the existence of the nation. President Bola Tinubu was home for salad break, but here is a surprise package. In some cases, there is an exception to the rule. This political prophet is honored in his hometown. One of his political descendants in Lagos created the platform, and the roll call, which included Vice President Kashim Shetima, caught across political divides to formally honor the democratic torchbearer that has literally brought the trophy home. We stand in complete solidarity with your vision and remain your partners in bringing this great vision to life. We're confident that under your stewardship and your leadership, Nigeria will reach unprecedented heights. For this purpose, the national seat of power literally shifted to the former national capital with leaders of the National Assembly also in attendance. Regardless of our party affiliation here, sir, we're confident that Mr. President will work with the Nigerian Governors Forum and other critical stakeholders to build a stronger and united Nigeria. No matter what we are going through today as Nigerians, we believe that the gains you are going to make from the current policies that you are putting in place will make Nigerians to smile and smile and smile. I want to say thank you to all of you. President Tinubu, always appreciative. This time, not just for the grand reception, but also for the understanding and support of Nigerians following the removal of fuel subsidy, which he described as a necessary top decision. We have no choice. From there, we must re-engineer the effectiveness of control and management of our resources in order to meet the obligation owed to Nigerians by politicians. I could have said to say I want to share off my benefits and participate in the arbitrage, but God forbid, no! That's not why you elected me. You chose me to bring about necessary changes that will benefit not only you, but your grandchildren and our tomorrow. Nigerians have severally lauded the new cause being chartered, but the president said the foundation is just being laid. We have just started. We have to re-engineer the financial system of the country. Break apart and see that economic planning and budgetary process is transparent enough to cater for all Nigerians. We will work together. Open door policy that will bring Nigeria from brinks 
back to a resilient economy. Just a month into the renewed hope administration, Nigerians acknowledge the ray, but the expectations continue from the stable of a crusader. Meanwhile, the Global Amnesty Watch has commended President Bola Tinumbu for the far-reaching decisions taken by his administration uh, so far, which have boosted investor confidence and given some assurance to the citizens on the sustainable growth, on sustainable growth and development. Activities of the current administration within one month upon assumption of office has endeared many, President including Amen. the Global Amnesty Watch, which acknowledged government policies so far as steps towards addressing challenges and sustaining the democratic gains of the country. The Global Amnesty Watch commends the step by President Mpola Ahmed Tinubu has taken, given the necessity to address the security challenges in the country. Nigeria needs stability to bring about sustainable development. It recognizes these presidential interventions and solicit for more sound socio-economic policies and programs. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress Youth Development Forum has appealed to the party's stakeholders to uphold the principle of rewarding hard work among members. The menace of high service and the attendant betrayal, most lighting, name dropping, scheming and manipulations among political actors, especially when their party emerges victory needs to be addressed. The group believed that planned reforms towards entrenching good governance and national development should be a collective task by all patriotic citizens. Many will say the outcome of the 2023 presidential election has seen a sweeping change at different levels of government in Nigeria. Some civil society groups uh, groups believe President Bola Tinubu should reach out beyond party lines in the appointment of key government positions with competence as the yardstick. That's underlined is that um, Senator Magnus Abe and all his followers voted for President Tinubu during the presidential election. All through that period, I am from River State and I have interacted with, um, I did interact with River State at that time, even following him in SDP. They all were saying Tinubu was their uh, presidential candidate. And that was what happened. As the new government settles down to business and begins to fully introduce its programs and uh, in different sectors of the economy, uh, development experts say those chosen to drive these programs also are almost uh, as important as the programs themselves in successfully realizing the intention behind the concepts presented during the campaigns. Dr. Lilian Ogboli uh, was in the trenches as coordinator uh, of uh, civil society groups, a coalition of civil society groups for uh, good governance. Uh, in the 2023 elections uh, during the presidential campaigns. Thank you for joining us uh, this time, Dr. Lillian. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Now, what are your thoughts after a month at the helm uh, of affairs by President Bola Apintinubu? Well, my thoughts are very explicit. My thoughts are clear. My thoughts are things you can see for yourself. My thoughts are what every other Nigerian, well meaning Nigerians around the world, the international community, and, um, you know, Cape Freud are talking about. Uh, thus far, um, Bal Ahmed Tinubu has taken a step in the right direction, has taken a very proactive step, has been very decisive in handling matters, has been daring what uh, previous governments were able to dare. Has, been, has shown that he's a patriot, has shown that his business is good governance in Nigeria. So thus far, anybody, any well-meaning Nigerian will rank him 
very high. He's doing very well, as a matter of fact. All right, as a close watcher of good governance, which sectors do you feel need the quick fix and which ones will require a more drawn out approach? Well, um, almost all the sectors, uh, you know, like you can see, need a quick fix, but um, I'll narrow it down to a few of them. First of all, there's nowhere a nation can thrive when the security prob there are security problems, when security is a problem. Uh, the president, as it were, needs to tackle the security problem very quickly. He needs to handle it very decisively, like he has done in other few areas. He needs to let Nigerians know that security is everybody's business, and therefore, he will not mind whose ox is God in his or intentions, you know, and actions to, you know, tackle the security problem. I know that he can do that because he did it in the, in the past. He's a man of track record. He had did that in Lagos. Lagos is one of the most secure states in Nigeria right now as we speak. And of course, it's courtesy of him. He led the foundation. He has proved whatever we are saying as people is based on his track record. Whatever I say as a person, as a group, is based on what Mr. President has done in the past. And if he could do it in Lagos, and Lagos is not the safest state in Nigeria, where people from different states converge to ensure that their lives and properties are secured, then I think that on a larger scale, he can also do that in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And of course, knowing you know, what his manifesto has uh, represented, knowing what is contained in the manifesto in his blueprints, of course, security tops is one of the highest uh, you know, areas that he wants to give priority to, and urgently to. So I think that security is one aspect that he needs to look at very carefully and very critically. Because without security, he wouldn't be able to achieve you know, the other aims and objectives that he has set aside to achieve. That is one. Another one is power. Power is one issue that needs to be handled very strategically and on time too. Because um, I know that uh, for every development to occur in any given uh, you know, organization or country or state, you must have relatively stable power. If you have issues with power all day around, every night, every day there are issues with power, it means that industries cannot work well. It means that God, I mean, uh, companies can also not function optimally. So power is very key. Power is another sector that the president has to address as quickly as possible. And then you have the educational uh, sector, which is also very key, both the formal and the informal educational sector. He needs to double up. He needs to improve on the facilities. He needs to improve on the structures. He needs to improve on the quality. He needs to pay teachers so that teachers can also impact very well on the, in the lives of their students and so on and so forth. So these are the few areas that we think infrastructure is there, you know, mass housing scheme is there because a lot of Nigerians are homeless, as a matter of fact, because of the insurgency problems around the country. So housing is another problem that he needs to also attend to. If he's able to attend to these five that I have named thus far, I think that will to be a step in the right direction and there will be an accelerated development. And of course, the government will be more stable because he will have peace, because things will move, there will be international trust, you know, and so on and so forth. So if he can handle these five that I have mentioned as far. I think that his development will be accelerated one. All right, you Thank have you. said in some of you, though, the four I've seen you, uh, you talk, talking about uh, bringing all hands on deck, you're even appealing to, uh, you know, uh, what we could call the bulk of opposition to join hands and all that. But opposition is also a main part of government. But you were talking about, uh, you know, some kind of uh, government of national unity and all that. Let's explain that concept to me, for, for instance. Government of national unity or unity, I mean, government as it were, is paramount, is critical, is important, is expedient, and is something, is an area that all well meaning Nigerians should look towards. They say a house that is divided against itself cannot stand. What we are saying now is this now election has come and gone. Now electioneering processes are over. Everybody has tested themselves in the field, they've tested their powers, their popularities, and so on and so forth. It is now time for business. Business of governance, business of governance in the midst of peace and tranquility, business of governance of unity, where everybody counts, where all hands should be on deck for the government to move forward. And we are confident saying this and courageous saying this because, um, first of all, we have been able to see thus far. Put Lagos State aside, put his track record as the president of, Lagos, I mean, as the governor of Lagos State aside. Now we are doing with the, we are dealing with the larger Nigeria. Now, in the past few weeks that he has been in the office, there is no government since 
independence that has recorded the kind of achieve achievement that he has recorded, both in areas of policies, policy making, both in areas of uh, you know proactive steps, both in areas of decisiveness, both in areas of wanting explicitly, clearly, to carry everybody along. If you look at the appointment he has made thus far, it says it all. Let, we are talking about stay with uh, carrying everybody along. Uh, you are, you know, uh, from the, our women folk, uh, uh, you would be expecting so. You would have some expectations as well. Yes, um, from the women, I'm gender sensitive as a matter of fact. But again, beyond gender, what I am looking for is national development that is positive in nature. National development that will be impactful on the lives of all Nigerians. National development that will carry on hands you know, on deck. But again, if you want to be result oriented, if you want to make an unprecedented achievement in a record time, what you look for is competence. For me, it is about competence. For me, it is about bringing the right people on board, not minding their political affiliations, not minding whether they are politicians or not, not minding whether they are men or women. What we need at this very critical time of ours is competence and ability to deliver on the dividends of democracy to the ordinary man. It is competence and ability to improve on the life of our subnationals. It is competence to ensure that our society is safe and sound. That our society is a place where international community can come and their businesses can thrive without fear of, you know, of security problems and all of that. What we need now, let us put sentiments and convictions aside. What we need now is competence. The right people that can do the job. Devoid of their political affiliation, devoid of their tribe, devoid of their religion. We need to begin to think right. We need to begin to think development. We All need right. to no, begin no, no. to think on how our lives can be positively impacted. Dr. This is what should dominate our minds as a matter okay, of Okay, Dr. Fact. Lillian, we will still come back to you for the closing lines, but we'll take a few stories uh before we come and close shop party members who uh, no let's uh to take the uh, uh next story very quickly the federal government has uh, solicited for more support from the european union in our quest to consolidate our uh, democracy with regards to ensuring more improvement on the electoral processes the secretary to the government of the federation george akume made the appeal when he received the european union election observation mission delegation the European Union Election Observation Mission is amongst the international election monitoring groups that participated in Nigeria's February 2023 general elections. Four months later, a delegation of the group is here to formally present its final report and recommendations to the federal government. We have uh, six priority recommendations contained in the report. In maybe two years' time, the European Union will, will deploy a follow-up mission to uh, engage with the Nigerian authorities on implementation of those recommendations. This is a process which we have done uh, not just in Nigeria, but in all of the uh, jurisdictions where we've been fortunate enough to receive an invitation to carry out uh, such a mission. Acknowledging the role of the EU election observation mission during elections, the SGF George Akume explains the trajectory of Nigeria's democratic development and points to several improvements in the electoral processes over the years. He attributed the success of the 2023 general elections to the deployment of the bimodal voter accreditation system, PIVARS, and other advanced technological initiatives. This report has just been given to me, so I don't know the recommendations. But I want to believe, and strongly too, that you are suggesting in this report that we improve on what took place. Not that we should throw away what we did, no, because we'll be doing a lot of disservice to the people of this country. The two investments here, they will yield results, and the new regime is prepared to make a difference in the way governance is carried out in this country. He urged the European Union to continue to support the federal government and leverage the nation's human and material resources for a mutual bilateral relations. Kenneth Nanim, NTN News.
The African Development Bank President, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, has pledged the bank's support towards revamping Nigeria's economy. Adeshino, who was Nigeria's Minister for Agriculture during the during President Goodluck Jonathan's administration, made the commitment in a meeting with President Bola Tinubu at the slight sidelines of the currently concluded the recently concluded uh, new Global Finance Pact Summit held in France. The African Development Bank President Dr. Akin Wumia Deshina had a meeting with the Nigerian President Bola Ahmed Tinubu during the new Global Finance Pact Summit in Paris. The bank's president was impressed by the Nigerian leader's commitment to build and sound policies for the country's economy like fuel subsidy removal and pledged that the bank will strongly support Tinubu's vision for the Nigerian economy. And I think the whole issue of um, correcting the exchange rate distortions that uh, Nigeria has uh, will also free up the access to Forex and also make Nigeria's currency uh, much more competitive in terms of export competitiveness for the things that we produce. All those are right signals that the president is sending, uh, which investors like, with the international community likes, which will also attract significant amount of uh, investment into Nigeria. I discussed with His Excellency the President about a couple of things. First, of course, is, of course, is agriculture. Uh, to see what we can do to support the government with regard to the Mr. President's vision uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in agriculture. Dr. Adeshina also revealed that the power sector was another issue he discussed with President Tinubu, how the bank intends to bring support to Tinubu's effort, his vision and that of his government with regards to access to electricity. He pointed out that President Tinubu wants to ensure that there is access to electricity in Nigeria and therefore he talked to the bank about how they can support him and he gave him the assurance that the bank will significantly support the power sector in Nigeria. Um, uh, we discussed about the youth. Uh, I've heard him speak quite a lot about young people. Uh, it's hard for young people and what he wants to do to support them. And um, he asked for our support with regard to what we can do for Nigeria on that. And I, and I explained to the president that uh, we will support uh, with the establishment of youth entrepreneurship investment banks in Nigeria. These are going to be new, new financial institutions that will support the access to um, financing at scale, both uh, whether it is in terms of uh, uh, debt or equity financing for businesses of young people. In All right, Dr. Lilian Obole, you listen to, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Akim Adishino, the chairman of the, I mean, the president of AFDB, talking about uh, President Tinumbu's uh, vision. Uh, very quickly, before I let you go, what are your expectations? First, apart from the president at the center, governors too have taken the reins of leadership in different states. What are you expecting to cascade down? And what are you going to, are you expecting to see, even in those states, as far as development initiatives are concerned? Well, um, I expect to see this policies impact on the lives of the ordinary man. One thing is for you to come, about, come up with reforms and policies that are meant to touch on the lives of the people. Another thing is for you to be able to implement these policies and reforms so that they can originally and actually impact on the lives of the people so that we can see, we can feel, and we can also enjoy. That is very important because at the end of the day, governance and government is for the people. That is the primary aim of government. So we expect to see things move in a, a positive direction. We expect to see agriculture boom, like Adishina has said. We expect to see the lights have take shape and become more functional and more, more, you know, more um, regular and frequent. We expect to see infrastructural revolution in you know, the necessary areas. So we expect to see good governance. We expect to see a government that is going to carry the people along. We expect to see the government with a listening ear like it has always been. We expect to see the government that want to really, really see development and development in the real sense of it so that Nigeria can move forward and be able to compare, come in and compare, you know, relatively with other committees of nations. So these are our expectations. And of course, we have no doubt whatsoever that the kind of man we have in the, at the helm of affairs today is a man that knows administration. He knows the nitty gritty of administration. He has demonstrated that in the past. And he's willing, he's proactive, he's showing clearly that what he's here for is to move Nigeria to the next level in a positive direction. So these are expectations, and we are sure that to a very large extent, this man is not going to disappoint Nigerians. He's not going to disappoint people who worked assiduously with him to get to where he is today. He's not going to dis I mean, uh, disappoint the world at large. A lot has been expected. From 
from him and we are praying that God in his infinite mercy will give him the knowledge and the world without, the strength, the wisdom to be able to carry on these activities, to be able to deliver on the dividends of democracy to the people like he has promised. Let him be a keeper of his word. And of course, let me also say something let, about women. Time, have, time is not our friend, but I think the, the, the aspect of women will probably uh, keep it for, uh, uh, you know, uh, subsequent programs. What uh, Dr. Leda, we want to thank you, thank uh, you uh, for your much. interventions uh, and of course your, uh, you know, insights into uh, what in the, what we need, of course, to do uh, in the uh, next few months, of course, as we uh, proceed. That has been political update for today. Of course, uh, we will continue to keep our eyes on uh, uh, the few short months remaining for the off-cycle elections to take place in Imo, Bayasa, and Kogi State, and we'll be giving you updates from there as well. Keep it locked on the Nigerian Television Authority for news, reviews, previews, and interviews. My name is Fisal Gufi. Thanking you so for staying tuned. All the best. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.